Good afternoon on Friday the 3rd of February. It's the end of the working week for those of you who work a standard five day week. Although I realise that more and more there are fewer people who do this. Our opening prayer. May God give us life. Give us love. Give us yourself. Help us to give our lives, our love and ourselves to you and to others. Through Christ who died and rose again for us. Amen. Today's readings are Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 to 19 and Matthew 28 verses 1 to 15. Before the President Tottenham FA Cup tie last weekend, various pieces of film footage were shown about the heritage of both clubs. In the case of Preston, this was rather grainy black and white footage because their glory days are in the distant past. They were the first team to do the League and FA Cup double, but this was in the late 1800s. Both David Beckham and Jordan Pickford have played for them, but their greatest player, Tom Finney, was at his peak in the 1950s. But you can't live based on past performance and there's no way of getting away from the fact that Preston are now a mid-table championship side. You may be surprised that this introduction brings us to the well-known story of Abraham and his son Isaac. From our readings over recent days, we know that Abraham has shown both faith and trust in God. We also know how easy it is for our relationship with God to slip. Is our passion, trust and love in God as strong or even stronger now than it was 10 years ago? Or maybe when we first came to know Jesus? God is making sure that Abraham's relationship with him hasn't slipped in any way with the passage of time. That's because God has such an important role for Abraham. He needs to be certain that Abraham's faith and trust in him hasn't lessened. God has to be the absolute highest priority in Abraham's life. And Abraham doesn't disappoint in any way whatsoever in his response to what God is asking in our reading from Genesis. And of course, as we read the whole of this episode, we know that it does have a happy ending. We come to our next prayer, the calling for peace and justice. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, and no strength known but the strength of life. Guide and inspire the work of those who seek your kingdom, that all people may find their security in your love, which casts out all fear, and in the fellowship revealed to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer. Let's pray that Jesus is at the centre of every decision which we take. Pray for the leadership of our country and pray and give thanks for the work of the United Nations. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'll leave you shortly, so that you can make your weekend plans, and I do hope that you do have a good evening. And I'll bless you.
the peace of God which passes all understanding, a peace which the world cannot give, be in your hearts and minds, in your home and your communities, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and with your families, and remain with you forevermore.